Welcome back, game students. This is Miss Cruz from uh, Stray Dog Theater's Arts and Mind online after school program. Today's topic is learning to edit videos, and it's part two. I'm using the iMovie app, and yesterday we uh, worked a lot with the uh, uh, colors. Uh, that's uh, the project. I used the split uh, part of the app to cut out uh, things and one thing that I did several times is I cut out a can that was in the kitchen just uh, to practice several times. So if you can see it in the video, uh, let me know. Uploading has a lot of uh, challenges for me. I'm going to try to insert videos as I make this meatball. So yesterday I showed you guys this uh, piece of uh, hamburger was still in the um, foil. So I made a little meatball and bring over some ingredients. I have some salt, some uh, cominos, that's called cumin, um, some beefy mushroom soup, uh, some brown sugar, some minced onions, and of course you know I have the eggs. I also have a seasoned um, bread mix and I'll bring that over when I come back again in a little while. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay guys, I'm back and um, here we go. I think this is thought out enough now, so just gonna get a push down in there. And of course, you know, the purpose of the video today is to, I'm gonna be looking at the colors. You know, the brightness of it, how close I was to uh, being able to capture the, the, uh, the whole idea of the video. So most of it's gonna be done after I, I stopped filming this, but it's just fun to learn something new. And that really is what I'm doing here. Uh, we were asked to make content to upload to our online site. And since I really didn't know how to do it, I, uh, I decided to just, you know, just take more time and learn how to do it. So now here's some salt I'm putting in, and, and you'll notice I really don't measure. Uh, I just go according to what I think something should taste like. And I'm trying to use up my spices, okay? Most of the time, like this uh, cominos, for example, the cumin, I have a um, mortar and a pestle, and I grind it. But since I have just a little bit left that's ground, I'm just going to try to use up stuff that I have and get rid of it. Because I'm not going to destroy as much as you know. So, there's that. I'm going to go ahead and toss the eggs in. And these are at room temperature. So I try to get everything as close as I can to room temperature. That way it doesn't have to spend that much time in the oven. So that saves on energy. There's the two eggs. I'm going to add some onions. And these are chopped onions. They're dried up onions. And yeah, I just, since I don't go to the store and, and I really don't like asking people to go to the store for me to get what I normally would get. So during this time I'm just making up for it by using ingredients that are already pre-prepared. Now I have tried um, adding this mushroom. It's like a mushroom soup, it's kind of thick. And I'm gonna try it because I, I normally use the fresh mushrooms for this recipe, but since I don't have any, I'm gonna go ahead and just add this. It's nice and thick, see that? It's nice and thick, and I'm just gonna add some of that to it and see how it does. Okay, like that. I need to add just a little bit of brown sugar. About a tablespoon, so these are just teaspoons that I have, so there's one, two, three. And I'm gonna put in this. Worcestershire sauce. I'm just gonna pour a few drops of this in. Probably equals to a tablespoon. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some breadcrumbs. Now these I've had, okay, they're for like making fried chicken. I bought this um, one time, actually I saw a cook with these online and she made some fried chicken and some pork chops, breaded. Well, I decided I'm going to use it in here, but now that I'm looking at them, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more like bread crumbs. It's actually more like just straight flour. So I am going to go about this a different way. I'm going to stop this video and uh, uh, get some bread crumbs. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, I, I took this out of the freezer. This is some bread, fresh bread that my son made. And I'm gonna make my own breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna let this thaw out a little bit and I'm gonna just uh, crush them up uh, really coarsely and uh, add them to my meatloaf. I think that'll be tasty, okay? 
All right, see you in a bit. I'm just going to chop it up. And coarse pieces. So, guys, you know our, our online arts and mind program. Uh, Miss Kara still has the story hour going, and uh, of course there's several other people. I'm from Mason, but all the sites are submitting different videos, and some of them look like they're really a lot of fun. So I encourage you guys to go to our site and take a look at what's going on and leave us a comment, because it does help our program, and we really do like to hear from you. We miss you guys, and um, of course, you know, as always, we, you know, we hope everybody's fine. But we do miss you, and we do enjoy hearing from you. Now, you might hear a train in the background. I live right near a railroad track. So, if you hear that noise, I might either leave it in the video, or do a sound over. We'll see where, just exactly where it falls, but hopefully you can hear me as I'm talking to you guys. Oh yeah, another thing I was going to put in here was um, some ketchup. Usually I put in tomato sauce or tomato paste, but on my order from Costco, I ordered some uh, ketchup and I didn't realize I was going to get these three ginormous bottles. And uh, so again, I'm trying to use something up, so I'm going to go ahead and use the ketchup instead of tomato sauce or tomato paste or fresh tomatoes. I, I have done it with fresh tomatoes a couple of times. I kind of do like the flavor. I use the Italian um, flavored uh, tomato paste and I really like that flavor. I'm going to mix all this up, um, guys. I'm going to continue to do this and then I will be back. Okay, so um, that's about as many breadcrumbs I'm going to add right now. But I'm going to go ahead and add probably, I'm thinking like a tablespoon more or less. A little bit more. More like maybe one and a half. I hope you guys are hanging in there, you know, with everything that's going on right now, this COVID-19. I'm, you know, I took on this challenge because rather than getting frustrated about not knowing how to do something, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna embrace it and, and learn something. So hopefully, um, you all have been learning new things. Some days are better than other days, but overall, I think I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'm hanging in there. I am going to get the oven ready, and we're gonna pop this in the oven and then I'm gonna make a topping for it. And we're gonna move on to make a very simple pizza because I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of the oven. So I'll make the pizza and the meatloaf on the same day. Okay, all right, thank you, see you in a bit. Well guys, you know what I almost forgot? I almost forgot to put the uh, peppers in. I talked about them yesterday when I made the salad and uh, I'm definitely gonna use these up today. I'm going to chop them up really finely and toss them in. There's the train. I don't know if you can hear it, guys. But it's going in the background. I thought I'd just let you guys hear that. Sometimes it uh, blows the whistle and other times it doesn't. But it's kind of encouraging, though, you know, when I hear it. Because I know that not everybody's at work, but, you know, some things just have to go on. And this particular train that goes by here delivers coal, so it's delivering energy and of course there are some uh, box cars on it that carry products from all over the world so you know the economy even though it's slowed down there are some things that are still working so it, I kind of like the idea that I get to see that it just reminds me that even though uh, I'm in, indoors most of the time and don't get to go to too many places, but I know that you know certain things just keep going on and hopefully we'll all get back to some semblance of normalcy soon. So that is a 
a sound that I like to hear every day. And it, uh, train comes by, oh, maybe three or four times a day. You never know when these trains are gonna have a real, really loud whistle. It's kind of cool. Okay, so we're just about done here. I'm gonna go ahead and stir in the, or fold in, really, the, the peppers. And that ought to give it a real nice flavor. Those breadcrumbs really help. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and scoop this into the baking dish that I have here and see if it fills it up. If there's not enough room for it, then I'll save a little bit, but I think I'll get a good size meatloaf out of this. And then I'm going to put this uh, baking dish on top of this uh, cookie sheet. I always just like to do that just to be extra careful in case it would happen to, to drip, to overflow, so it doesn't get all over my oven because then that's a big mess. Okay, so I'm gonna bake that. I'm gonna preheat the oven uh, to 350 and then we're gonna bake this for probably about 45 minutes. Okay guys, so one of the craziest things ever just happened. Okay, and getting ready for this video, I totally forgot that I also needed to make the pizza sauce, okay? So I'm gonna delay the um, meatloaf for just a few minutes. It's not gonna take long to make this. Um, poured a little bit of olive oil into my little sauce pot. Add some garlic, there we go. And I just remember too that I, I didn't add the garlic to the meatloaf, but since I put that mushroom soup in there, I think it's gonna have plenty of flavor. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Even though I could, I guess, take it out since I, um, actually that is what I'm going to do. I'll go ahead and take it out, because uh, it's not started yet. And I think what I'll do is just give it a layer of garlic to the top. I'm just spreading it out. I, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm just gonna spread a little bit of garlic over the top. Hopefully that'll sink right down in there. I'm just spreading that over. And I'll get another spoon, because I don't want to dip this spoon, since it has raw meat, into the jar. But I think that'll do it. I think that'll give it a, a nice flavor. And I really don't stress too much about cooking. I will change a recipe in a heartbeat. If I don't have an ingredient, I'll just improvise. And that's what I'm doing now. Rather than stressing that I didn't put the garlic in there, I'll just put a thin layer at the top and let it go ahead and flavor the meatloaf that way. It'll still be delicious. I'm sure. It's kind of sizzling, kind of cool. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and lower this heat doesn't burn. Since I forgot all about the sauce part, I, um, I'm just gonna make something up here. Just using a can of Rotel and some tomato paste. It's an Italian flavor, but I'm gonna go ahead and just make the best pizza sauce that I can and not worry about it. So there goes one can. And now for this pizza sauce, usually I do like to use fresh ingredients or tomatoes, but I needed to use up that other can anyway, so it'll be okay. It'll be fine. Okay, so here's this tomato paste. We'll add that. I do have some herbs. For it. Okay. Actually, I could use some of my fresh herbs. I do have some fresh herbs. But I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and use, I have a jar 
of rosemary. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use that up. I need to use it and then during the week, maybe Saturday, I'll use some fresh herbs to make something else. If I'm still filming this series, if I think we need another video for the editing, then maybe I can make something with fresh herbs, like a bread or something fun. I always like to put butter into my sauce. I think it just adds a nice flavor. I'm going to add some Italian seasoning to this, and I'll be right back. Okay, here go two that I like. I like rosemary so much, and there's another one. It's called Bouquet Garni, and um, it's a special blend from a local uh, spice store, and I'm going to go ahead and use that. It's one of my favorites. We'll come back and make that pizza dough and get these two things into the oven, okay? Okay, so now you can see that that is uh, bubbling up now. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is starting to bubble up. So um, what I'm going to do is just remove it from the heat and let it sit there while I make the dough, the pizza dough, okay? Okay, here goes the super, super easy pizza. And it is made out of Bisquick. I don't know if you can see that. Not a big box of Bisquick, but um, I learned how to make this when I was about eight years old. Um, my godmother taught me how to make this. And all you do is you just pour in to a bowl, depending on what size of pizza you're going to make, and it's about two cups. Okay, about two cups of Bisquick for the size that I'm going to make, and you'll get to see the size. So you'll know you need a little more. Um, but the thing about this is you just turn on the water and get it to warm. Get the water warm. This is the part that it's kind of hard to explain if you've never done it. So I'm just going to show you, and this is exactly how I do it. So you just grab the bowl, okay, and the water is getting pretty hot. So you're just going to take it into the water for just a couple of seconds and start just with a regular fork. You're going to just start tossing it around. You can go one more time, and you can kind of see that the dough is really kind of sticky and one more time so that's like three times under the water and then you just mix it super fast and it's pretty sticky okay but you want it to be sticky maybe one more time just a little tiny bit of water that time okay so just kind of smush it around in the bowl. Then, because it is sticky, you want to add a little more biscuit to the outside of it so that you can shape it into a bowl. So I usually just shake it in, okay? But since I'm showing you, I'm just gonna show you that way you'll kind of get an idea of how much. So it's just about a good oversized tablespoon. So you're just gonna sprinkle that over, and then you get another tablespoon, and you're just gonna put it onto your board. So then there's the, the little extra that we put in there, just to give it that nice, soft texture and we can roll it onto the, or we can go ahead and put it onto the, onto the board. Okay, so now here, I'm just gonna spread this out on the board. Okay, and you can do this with your hand, because we're gonna get our hands in there in a second. Okay, but just to make sure, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands one more time. Just because, it's really important, guys, you know, to, as you well know now, to wash your hands, but when you're cooking, it's so important to always keep washing your hands. 
as you're going through the process. I'm going to go ahead and bring this out. You can see, you can see, well here, let me turn the bowl this way towards the camera so you can see it. So I'm just going to go ahead and scoop this out. You can see that it's very sticky, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it into the middle of the, the biscuit that I have on the board there. And this way now. Get it all out. And this part, you know, it it really doesn't matter um, what size it comes out. You know, like if it's a little bit small for your the pan that you're going to use, then it's okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring this this quick around the edges first. Okay, I'll go ahead and take that off the fork. And here's where you start to handle it. So you're just gonna roll it up, just barely, on every side. Because it is sticky, but you're gonna get keep bringing the, the little bit of biscuit that you have in there, just gently, so that when you're done, your uh, your your dough is uh, soft. It's a nice fluffy consistency, but it shouldn't just all be sticking to your fingers. Okay, you just have to gently just keep rolling it around, and that's that's all there is to the dough, guys. I'm gonna let it sit here for a couple of minutes, making sure that that none of it is gonna stick when I come back to work with it, okay? You can always add a little bit more Bisquick to it if you need to, if it's just still too sticky, and that's okay. Okay, there you go. So we're just gonna let it sit here for a few minutes. Okay guys, so I wanted you to see just how you can pick this up. It's And what you do is when you're picking it up, you're just gently picking it, you're not like trying to get your hands in there so it won't get sticky again, but you can see that it's just nice and pliable, okay? So then you kind of just shape it into a, sort of like a flat round circle, okay? Now some people just, if you have a small uh, pizza or just a small baking dish, you can just kind of press it in or you can also just get a rolling pin like I'm gonna do now, even though I'm gonna use, uh, I'll show you the pizza pan that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. I was gonna use the stone, but I'm, I just wanna try this one out because I've had it for a long time and I have just never really bothered to use it and I'm going to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll it out a little. My rolling pin is kinda heavy, so here, let me move this sauce out of the way a little. So yeah, so my uh, pin is kind of heavy, so I don't have to really push down. And you really don't want to push down too hard on this dough because it is on the stickier side. And so, you know, you just want to keep it nice and pliable, okay? So I'm gonna actually add a little bit more this to it. And it's just a handful, so I'm just going to kind of sprinkle the top a little and leave a little bit on the side there as I get ready to turn it. Okay. So see how big it gets right away? And if you get a little hole in it, no worries, just kind of press it out, okay? So now that I can see that it's going to be super pliable and for what I'm going to do with it, just get a little bit. You feel that like you have a little sticky spot there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the pizza pan and bring it over. So I think it's ready. I could put a little bit of oil on the bottom of this, but I'm gonna try it without. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring it in half, lift it up, and bring it over to the pan. over and then just spread this on there. 
and just push it out, okay? Now, I used to have this one pizza pan that I used it for so many years, but I actually had two, and I gave them to my kids when they went to college. And so now I have this, and I also have that uh, stone. But I just want to try this pan out. So that's that's pretty good. So now this type of dough is it's gonna rise when it's in the oven. So you want to just even it out so that it's even, so you don't want it to be like raw in one part. So you just kind of have to feel it out and and try to get it. To where it's even, to where you feel like it's even. Okay. Now this is a non-stick pan, so I don't want to ruin it by scratching it. So what I'm going to do is it needs to have holes. Um, so I'm just going to gently, not so that it's going to scratch the pan. Okay, and you just put these, I, if you make pies, you probably do this to your pie crust before you put it in the oven. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just get several little holes in it, and that's just so you just don't get this big, huge bubble in the middle anywhere. Okay, so there's, that's good. So now I'm going to rinse my hands off so that I can get to the cheese. We'll put the sauce on and uh, put the cheese on there. And we're going right into the oven with this pizza. We'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and add the sauce. So, take this lid off. It's been waiting there for a minute or two. So, just give it a little stir. And I always like to just start in the middle. So, Kind of just put it in the middle and then just get some out to the sides. Okay, that's pretty good. It's a thick sauce. I usually do make a thick sauce. Um, because I like how it kind of soaks into the dough. That's just like my favorite way to do it. you know also I'm just gonna make a cheese pizza today but um, you know at this point you could be so creative you could use just to put about anything onto it to top your pizza however you like it you know pepperoni sausage basils whatever you really really like chicken alfredo well you know you could have made a white sauce too I mean that's very good I love that also but this is was super easy to make and no stress involved on this one really. Okay, so there's that. Um, I have enough there to where with some of the other bread that I have, I could make like a pizza boat. You know, you have enough left over, you could make like a pizza boat or you can make a dip. Okay, so we have some Colby Jack, Monterey Pepper Jack. So this is gonna add some I'm going to spread this out just a little. So, one of my favorite, favorite flavors is sharp cheddar cheese. So that's next. When it comes out of the oven, I top it with a little bit of Parmesan, so it will have one more flavor added to it. But we'll see how that sharp cheddar does. Okay, and there we go going into the oven and we'll see you later yes, guys pizza is out of course it's gonna be out before the uh, meatloaf and like I said I sprinkle a little bit of uh, Parmesan on it That's how I like it while it's still hot and that's the easy peasy pizza that I know how to make and um, we're gonna see about editing this video because I sure have learned a lot from it about preparing before you film and uh, just uh, how much time it takes and I haven't even started the editing yet so it's uh, quite a bit of work but a lot of fun okay so we'll uh, see you a little bit later when I take the 
meatloaf out of the oven. I'll show you how that turned out. Okay guys, so now here's the meatloaf. So what I do is I just spoon the glaze on and then it's gonna go back into the oven for a good 15 or 20 minutes longer. And I just wanted to show you that process. So when I pull it out, I'll let you see how it looks when it's been baked on there, pretty good. Okay, so here's the meatloaf. It is smells so wonderful in this kitchen right now. And it is going to be delicious. Has a great glaze on it. So we'll uh, talk to you later. I'll be giving you a little rundown of what went well and what didn't go so great and why it took so long to make this video. Okay, bye.